I'm using a name because it's easier for me to keep track of this shit. Some background. My dad is a doctor, was stationed at McMurdo for 11 months in the 90s, not saying what year because he was the only doc there and y'all could track me down, frequently went out on scientific expeditions. First and foremost, there were some areas people just didn't go to, they weren't environmentally hazardous, they just were avoided for one reason or another. When my dad asked one of the researchers who had been there for 10 years, he went pale and told him to shut up. It was about 30 miles south 10 east of McMurdo, they took a 5 mile detour around whatever the hell was there. So already things are adding up, there were little outposts here and there, think a metal tube sticking out of the ground, with a hatch in the side. They were supposedly emergency in climate weather shelters, but the walls were to thing and they were always locked. Secondly was a weird structure. My dad said one time they were cresting a hill near the spot they avoided and a grey building with a white roof was in the distance, and that it didn't look like at the normal shelters they used, but almost like a office building. Also sorry about spelling and shit, I think faster than I can type and I want to get this out there thirdly there were the striders big freaking five-legged things that crawled across the continent at night or in snowstorms there were sightings from the military personnel there, most of McMurdo is US Navy, my dad had a Polaroid of one of the footsteps in a track from one of the Dakars they had, and it was easily a foot deep into the snow that was already packed down from a 10-ton truck also. What the normal shelters looked like. Interesting, isn't it? I don't really have that kind of feeling towards North Pole. And well, there are people living around the North Pole, while South is strictly controlled on who goes in and out. Fun fact from not so long. Did you knew that COVID-19 outbreak on Antarctica started in the Peruvian army base? 36 army personnel was infected, official numbers of stationed personnel unclear. Why keep that many military if this is all just snow and ice? You make a good point. The official reasoning for Antarctica being controlled is they want to keep it the last untouched place on Earth. Big freaking five-legged things. How big? Does the thing from the pig resembles it? Like, Strider from Half-Life big as far as they know, footsteps at least 30 to 40 feet apart and now, if you have ever played Pathways into Darkness, one of the enemy resembles it but only just think pick related but white slash grey. Seven to eight stories tall and five legs instead of two. Like Morrowind Striders? I don't know, never seen them. KK my guy, so as said my dad was a doctor, got yelled at by superior officer, who said they didn't need none of you unwanted smart types around here. Guy was a prick and hated anyone who wasn't a grunt or a researcher. Let leak to my dad that he was replacement for a doc who had snooped around, tried to scare my dad. Guy was a total douche. One day a guy who my dad knows for a fact isn't at McMurdo or any of the nearby bases comes in, escorted, with severe lacerations. He is told that the guy fell. My dad calls bullshit. The cuts were too clean to be ice or rocks, plus no debris left in wound. Guy's delirious and while he's under anesthesia, starts talking about things he probably shouldn't be saying. Something about, we let them loose. And, they were frozen we thought they were dead. He starts to say something else but the guards yell at him to shut the hell up, and gag him. That's right they gagged a guy who is only getting oxygen from a mask. My dad flips and rips it off yelling at them and asking what the hell they are doing. The guard sticks his M16 in my dad's face, forces him back to his quarters, and doesn't let him out till the dude is patched up and waiting on the next plane from South America. In regards to Morrowind striders, too small, too fat, but the legs are right, Think upright torso on five spindly legs, open top, much taller. Oh yeah, but after that he started taking note of stuff. 
He had a Apple II he used for flight sims, and he started keeping track of information he gathered. Said he hasn't looked at it in years. I'm going to try and get it OU and running see what I can find on it. Till then, not much else I know about what went on. He said he saw the Striders a few times in the winter, but kinda hard to prove. Says he's forgotten a lot about those days. If I can find the computer, I can get more stories. Other than that not much else. One time they hit something with the Dakar. Which was a big deal since there aren't many penguins in the Antarctic. And when they got out, the researcher who told my dad to shut up forced him back into the car, dad said it looked like one of the things from the Cloverfield movie but you know, all effing crushed to bits. So spindly little legs and the like. Says he thinks it was buried under the surface level of snow which is why they didn't see it. Also. Seven to eight story tall spider monster. You Fujin blew it, but please continue anyways. Agreed. It sounds stupid. But what? A fast growing possibly supernatural apex cryptid, with a white spindly body. That only moves in low visibility. I'm only parroting what I heard. I would say it is maybe 20 to 30 feet tall. But I wasn't there. My dad's theory is that while taking boar ice samples we found something. Dug it up and one or more escaped. They grew into what roams Antarctica, and we shut down the continent because of it. Give me a few moments guys. I'm going to take a picture and censor the name of the plaque my dad got from being stationed at McMurdo, will have the whole slash X and the date thing in it to prove I ain't lying. As promised. Snowstorms are a hell of a lot worse than people make em out to be, as I said that's when people see the striders. But there is banging on the doors, windows, walls everything. Dad said he thought he saw one of those small things hit his window and bounce off once while he was playing FA18 sim, my bad it was a 11SI not 11E, I would say, that with both the fact that they ran one over in summer, and that they are most active in winter. It's very likely that these things like extreme extreme cold, I have a hell of a lot more documents with my dad's name I could take photos of, but a quick Google reverse image will show that is a original in many ways. I'm going to see if I can get the 2SI to run. Found it and got it out, can't find keyboard though. And proof he was at McMurdo. I can't get it running tonight, I'm honestly really tired I have work tomorrow morning. But my dad literally just woke up and I asked him, and he told me something he didn't already tell me. So people die in Antarctica. It happens, it's cold and accidents happen. Every time someone died during the winter snowstorms though, he had to wait for them to thaw and sew them back together, similar wounds from the person who dipped in the summer except one man. Another he didn't know. Who was missing his lower half. This guy was carted in by similar guards, but not the same. His intestines had spilled out and my dad had to sew on fake cloth lower half after sealing up this guy's torso. They then dressed him in battle dress. The official cause of death is hypothermia but we both know that's bullshit. His lower abdomen from the end of the ribcage down had been ripped off violently. There's shit out there Anance. You better believe it. So I asked him a few more questions about injuries, and he said there was a lot of lost limbs from frostbite. A few cuts here or there. Those two are the only two that stick out to him. There were a lot of lacerations on people who did stuff outside in the winter 
and the only ones allowed out were a certain group of Arctic warfare soldiers, and the researchers. He said talking about all of this has gotten his memory going. Said he grabbed one of the researchers' journals one time, and it had all kinds of diagrams of thing that didn't look anything like any animal there was supposed to be out there. This is where he got his descriptions for the striders and the spiders. He cornered one of the researchers once and questioned her, she got really stiff and refused to tell him anything, and he later got a talking to from his CO about how useless he was. And how if there was another incident they were sending him back stateside. He ignored this though and when his CO was away, looked through his files, this guy controlled the whole base at the time found documents regarding certain operations during the winter months and that there were requisitions for ammo. He got caught though and this is what led to him being kicked back to the States. He got court-martialed but because he never signed a NDA, and he never found anything bad they docked his pay and sent him on his way. Other People's Stories Once they told my dad he was being shipped out, despite the fact that it was the day he was supposed to leave. He stopped caring what people thought and started gathering stories from everyone he could. Most of it was I saw this or I saw that but nothing he could really work with. Then came in Jones, not real name. Jones was one of the Arctic warfare specialists. Green Beret. The guy was autistic, strong as fuck and smart as hell. Only got through all the training because he could hide himself. And while being regarded, could do a lot other members of his team couldn't do, but the one thing Jones had that the others didn't was a conscience. Jones felt bad for what he did, and my dad had an undergraduate degree in psychology. They had an agreement. Jones hurts himself to get sent to my dad. My dad helps Jones get stuff off his chest everyone is happy. His buddies don't know he is going to shrink he gets to feel good. And the CO gets to have a functioning soldier. One time Jones wakes my dad up, about three days before my dad is supposed to ship out. It's two in the morning. Jones just came back from some mission. Says he needs to talk to my dad. My dad tells him to piss off, not this early, and Jones puts something on my dad's chest. It's the leg of one of these small things. My dad freaks and Jones puts a hand over his mouth and tells my dad a story, this is where it all comes together and ons, clench your ass no bathroom breaks until the ride has stopped, some of you may say this sounds like a story with supporting information leading to a climax, screw you, got to make it sound good for YouTube, eh? Jones proceeds to tell my father the most freaking incredible story I have ever heard, it confirms many theories on 4chan and IRL, and it proves American collusion with China's human trafficking and it confirms the reason for tunnel warfare training US Marines recently undertook. Y'all ready? Jones gets woken up at 5 in the morning the previous day by his squad leader, let's call him Jack, Jack tells him to get his ass up. To clarify these are SFODA, with a total of 12 men in the squad, and that they're going somewhere. Jones expects an expedition with some researchers, but they don't. They go to the military Dakar, with a hole up top for a gun turret, they have an M134 minigun inside the truck because it's technically demilitarized but not really, and load up their gear. They leave and make a beeline for the area everyone avoids. My dad figured this out when he said the heading was southeast, and they get to this office building and it looks sorta like pick related, according to father's recollection, and they drove up to it. They park out front operator their way inside and it's effing carnage. Think government lab in season 2 of Stranger Things, is just freaking nuts. They clear a few rooms when one of their guys gets merced by one of these tiny bastards. They light it up, and keep going. There are offices with names on them, some American, some Chinese, some Chilean. There are bodies everywhere it's crazy, right? So two more guys get injured and they're moved outside to the truck. The rest of them move downstairs to the tunnels. 
It's a secret lab. And, it, is, gigantic. They have a strider in a cage it's that freaking big. Or at least they used to. Many of the cages are broken open and there are dead bodies everywhere. Jones doesn't say much about this stuff here other than there are tunnels with bullet trains in them with destinations like Hong Kong, New York, Melbourne. A city for every major country out there. They find a cage that has been ripped into with two spiders in it. They, are, eating, children. In Antarctica there are children? Shouldn't be goddamn possible. Oh, wait. China. It's been known for a while that China plays a part in its huge amount of human trafficking, now we know where the bodies go. They found a few scientists and move them to a different base. Exterminate most of the bastards in there and move out. It took them almost 18 hours of pure fighting to clear that place out. So guys. I guess we know what's really going on. And I'm very 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 grateful to get all of this out there. Honestly, my dad would kill me if he knew I have shared this, but honestly. I'm sick and freaking tired. I remember a time where I didn't know where I grasped at straws for an answer to questions I could barely understand. Here it is slash x slash, here are your answers.